Hey friends, it's Smirky, and it's finally almost here. The 1.3 update. Sound the alarms! It's happening! With each passing day, we get closer and closer to Toontown Corporate Clash's latest update, the version 1.3.0 update, Hires and Heroes. I have talked about the update a little bit on Twitch already, on my live streams, twitch.tv forward slash smirky. If you're not following me on Twitch, that is a great way to check out my latest live streams. During the month of August, there's been quite a few blog posts about the update, so let's get into it. On August 5th, 2022, the Corporate Clash crew put up this blog post. This blog post came about a week after the version 1.3.0 informational trailer that was premiered on their Corporate Clash YouTube channel. While this blog post does start to touch upon some of those features, it also talks about something else that was mentioned in the informational trailer, the partnered closed server. So what's going on here? If we scroll down just a little bit in this blog post, we could start to see a little FAQ format about some kind of QA server. So it talks about what a QA server is and how it it pertains to this upcoming update and it also starts to go into some of the things that are going to be available on this closed testing server. This includes things like clubs, group finder, their brand new chat system, level 85 tunes, eyelash customization, HD cog bodies, new zap animations, as well as significant changes to gag and prestige balances which we are going to touch upon later in this video. Now the new QA server is going to be available for all currently active partners within the Toontown Corporate Clash partner program. Program. There I am, Gary. If you're not familiar with the Toontown Corporate Clash Partner Program, at the top of their website, there's a little button called Partners where you can scroll through all the different channels that are part of the Partner Program, whether they're family friendly or they're considered more on the mature side of the program. So active members of the Toontown Corporate Clash Partner Program get access to this closed testing server when it does release. They have also talked about an internal list that they've created inviting additional community members who are not necessarily part of the Partner Program, but out Outside of that initial list, it doesn't sound like the closed tested server is really going to be available to that many people. If we scroll down here, we can see that August is not when this closed testing server is going to be releasing, nor the update itself. Fortunately, Toontown Corporate Clash has been keeping things pretty steady with their 1.2.8 update that they recently published that featured a task line revamp of Yield Toontown and other various improvements, and they have been making some bug fixes along the way. However, with that said, the 1.3.0 update isn't actually coming out in August, so we probably won't really start to see the ball rolling on this closed testing server or really the update itself until maybe at least September. But don't take my word for it because as of this recording, I genuinely have no idea when the closed testing server is going to be coming out. Of course, after this video gets out there, we probably have a better idea. I can swear that as of this recording, they have not told me anything about when this closed testing server is specifically going to be released. So if we actually start getting into the Corporate Clash update itself, they put out this blog post on August 23rd that talks about the update as well as the future of Doodles. Doodles! Now, according to this statement here, they are temporarily removing Doodles from Toontown Corporate Clash as part of the 1.3 update. Essentially, as you read through this blog post, which all the blog posts, by the way, are gonna be put in the description below to check out, you'll kind of see that there were some issues with Doodles and how it caused so many district resets and bugs. And take a look at this, 33 district resets within a 14 day period, that does pose a problem for the stability of the game. So it does kind of make sense why they would take an action like this, as sad as it is for Doodles to be removed from the game temporarily. They show ways that the game is changing, such as a special status effect to the megaphone that causes the megaphone to heal for a lot more laugh. And we'll get into a little bit more about the gag rebalancing here in a bit. But as of their latest 1.2.8 update, they went ahead and made some adjustments to doodles, which players have probably already noticed in the game. And eventually they're going to be completely wiping out doodles in 1.3. Yo, look at these Polaroid photos of Kappa the doodle. I love Kappa the doodle. He looks so happy. Oh my gosh. In all seriousness, they do talk about how they are 100% committed to bringing Doodles back in the future in a future update, and they've already started planning out a way to revamp them in the future. So similar to clubs, it looks like they're planning on revamping Doodles in a way that they see as better for the community. Of course, they also have a FAQ 
FAQ here. If you do want to scroll through the blog post yourself, again, link is going to be in the description. Now, one major aspect of this new update is gag rebalancing. And this blog post was posted very recently on August 25th, 2022. As we begin to scroll down a little bit here, we will start to see that they have updated the gag training page within the sticker book as meant to prevent any accidental refunds of your training points, which is pretty nice. They do mention for gag rebalancing that none of the gag changes mentioned in this particular blog post have received any formal play testing. So this is where that partner QA server in the corporate clash ecosystem becomes really important. So these things can actually be play tested by partners and we can actually provide that feedback directly to the partner program team. So starting off this blog post, we have information about tune up and trap. It looks like the wrecking ball knocks the shoes off the cogs, which is just honestly so cool and a very nice touch. It's also looking like tune up and trap haven't necessarily received too many substantial balance changes. They've done a few visual bug fixes, but other than that, these two gag tracks haven't really changed much. But when we start getting into lure, things get a little more interesting. As you can see up here, lure decay has been completely removed. If you're not familiar with lure decay, essentially the longer a cog was lured, the lower the accuracy would get for a gag to hit the cog. And there would be a slight chance of lure decay coming into effect where a gag would miss on a lured cog. But now that's been completely scrapped and lure gag accuracy will always be 100% starting in the 1.3 update. Additionally, the knockback damage dealt by lure is now dependent on the lure itself rather than the gags used. So you notice how this birthday cake slice deals 55 knockback damage, which is higher than the original damage value of the gag itself. That's because that is the knockback damage of the $10 bill gag. It is 55 knockback. They've also tweaked some other aspects of lure gags as well, such as the accuracy of values, as well as the amount of rounds that it's lured for by one round for all lure gags. So presentation and $50 bill lured for the same amount of rounds. Again, none of these have been formally play tested because they're only gonna start to take effect once we get the partner QA server. Next up is sound. Of course, I am soundless in Toontown. I know, I know. The sound gag track is notorious for being somewhat divisive in the community. Oh boy. There are lots of different opinions within the Toontown community as to how a sound gag track rebalance should work. So here's Corporate Clash's take on it. One of the big changes they've done is that Unprestige sound now deals similar, if not better damage than the former version of Prestige sound. Also, sound gags no longer inflict combo damage, which improves its viability in solo usage. So if you were to use four Augas, it would deal 120 damage without the 20% combo. They've also adjusted some of the values of the sound gags, so you can take a look at them here. Additionally, there's a brand new effect for the sound gag track, the encore effect. As you can see here in this GIF, there's a little encore text that pops up over your tune, and then little trumpets that seem to swirl around your character visually. So whenever you use the sound gag, you actually gain 10% increased gag effectiveness to all non-sound gags for the next turn. So I think this will definitely create some interesting strategies moving forward. Next up is Squirt. The Storm Cloud does 95 damage now. Yes, we did it. We did it. They've also made some changes to Prestige Squirt. Prestige Squirt no longer provides an area of effect soak, which was pretty useful for zap gags. Instead, Prestige Squirt actually buffs the damage of all squirt gags by 20%. But area of effect soak isn't completely gone because the glass of water, water balloon, fire hose, and geyser provide area of effect regardless of prestige. This does mean that the squirting flower, the squirt gun, the seltzer bottle, and the storm cloud will only soak the singular cog. To make up for it, they add boost to damage values, which is where the 95 damage storm cloud comes in. So how exactly does this affect the zap gag track? If you're not familiar with Zap, it was actually a new gag track introduced in Toontown Corporate Clash and actually was introduced in its former server name, Toontown Pro so this goes on to talk about how it was one of the most controversial tracks in Corvette Clash and still tends to be. So they talk about a lot of the changes. Basically, you can read all about it. Again, link in. The but basically, there is now only one rule for Zap jumps. Zap will jump left across adjacent soaked cogs. If it cannot start by going left, it will instead start by going right. That's it. They seem to have removed a lot of side effects in association with this change. Zap switching directions while jumping. Zap jumps ignoring cogs that have 
already been hit by a zap jump in the same turn, etc, etc, you get the idea. They've also tweaked various mechanics and behaviors of zap. The soak damage bonus of zap is now rolled into the base damage of the gag, so lightning now reads as having 240 as opposed to 80, while still dealing the full 240 damage on soaked cogs. Dry zap now has a guaranteed chance to miss. <laughs> I'll never be able to dry zap again. They also adjusted the damage curve for some of the zap gags at lower levels, which you can take a look at here. And check out this demonstration of triple zap. Look at that new zap animation. The cogs literally get thanos And what's this on the right? A brand new zap gag. What's that all about? Give a round of applause for our two new zap gags, light bulb and broken radio. So these two new gags are going to be replacing the balloon and taser gags within the zap gag track. The light bulb is the new level three zap gag. The broken radio is the new level 4 zap gag, and the cart battery has been upgraded from level 4 to a level 5 zap gag. Moving on to throw. Prestige throw now heals the user for 20% of the gag base damage upon usage. We can take a look at the demonstration here. So as you can probably guess, this is probably a replacement for doodles in the 1.3.0 update, at least temporarily. They also mentioned that the whole fruit pie gag has been buffed from 50 damage to 55. I think I'm definitely going to have to go back in and prestige my throw again. Drop. Next up is the drop gag track and the final gag track in Toontown Corporate Clash. Drop gags now roll for accuracy individually individually per drop gag used on a target instead of being all or nothing. We can see this demonstration here where the first drop gag misses, but then the second one hits. So if you use all four pianos against a litigator in the overclocked CLO fight, then some of the drop gags might actually hit and some others might actually miss. They also reduce the accuracy cap of drop from 95% to 90%. And to make up for these changes, the prestige drop gags are going to get a 15% accuracy boost applied at all times rather than just being applied for solo drop. Now, here's something very interesting. SOS cards are getting reworked in Toontown Corporate Clash. Long gone are the days of using Professor Pete for a restock all SOS card because they're getting rid of those too. So unlike SOS cards, IOUs are single target and activated on demand. So IOUs give a massive buff in a gag track for one tune for when they use it next. So you can see all the adjusted values below for all the different kinds of SOS cards. For example, with tune-up, Madam Chuckle does plus 35 tune-up to the next three tune-up gags, while Flippy does 90 plus tune-up for the next one singular tune-up gag. They also made a change to Rain, which provides plus 20 damage to the next singular gag used, and they removed Rain's IOU completely from the Derek Man battle. So instead of it being given as a reward in the Derek Man fight, now it's just going to be given as an additional reward for every single VP completed. So restock all, Cog's damage down, and Tune's accuracy are no longer able to be obtained and they're now becoming legacy rewards. Long gone are the days of Professor Pete restocking all your gags. I think IOUs are going to be very, very interesting to try out on the partner QA server. But just from this blog post alone, let me know what your initial thoughts are on the rework on SOS cards. There's a lot of really interesting changes coming to this major update and honestly, we've only really scratched the surface of this update. They seem to be going in about a lot of the rebalancing on gags and removal of doodles and different UI updates. But even with the closed testing server, we still aren't going to get a good look at what kind of content is going to be new in this update. So that should give you a big picture as to just how massive this new update is. Not to mention the dozens upon dozens of brand new soundtracks that are coming to this game. I've received permission from the Corporate Clash crew to play some samples of audio of some of the new music that they posted on their YouTube channel. Let's listen to some of the music, shall we? That was pretty awesome. So this first one is called Brain Blast, and you're gonna notice in the background a picture of what looks like some kind of a classroom setting, which is very, very interesting. And we don't really have an idea of what this is. So it's gonna be really cool to see what this area looks like in the game. The music doesn't have to slap this hard on a Toontown private server. It really doesn't. I love how the music just seamlessly loops from beginning to end and back to the beginning. Huge ups to Duke Tricky Flip and the rest of the Corporate Clash composers out there who are making incredible music like this for the Toontown community. Now, this next one is just entitled dot dot dot.
I just have to pause real quick. You can see this little Morse code right here. I think this relates to some kind of ARG lore kind of thing within the corporate clash community. If you want to transcode it, you can. I think the community has already deciphered it though. And here's the last OST video I got for you. This one is entitled question mark, question mark, question mark. It's really cool to get a glimpse in the background of like some of the new areas within this update. Some of these areas probably won't be available in the partner QA server, so we're probably just gonna have to wait and see when this update comes out. I can already tell there's going to be so much new content and so many new changes to the game in this 1.3.0 update. Based on all the information that's been available to us as of this video, what are your thoughts on the 1.3.0 update? And it kind of sucks because I want it now. Let me know in the comments section below what you think. As a reminder, I'm leaving links to all the and hey, if you ever have any thoughts you want to share with me, come check out my live streams on twitch.tv forward slash smirky. You can find my schedule, more information about what I do on Twitch, and you can also leave a follow by hitting the follow button. Before I end this video, I just want to share that I'm going to be a special guest at PAX West 2022 in Seattle, Washington from September 2nd to September 5th. I even get to moderate a panel with some amazing panelists talking about charity streaming, what it's like to get into charity streaming, some tips and strategies you need to know to start your own charity stream, and what it takes to actually host a charity stream on your live stream. I'm really excited to be attending PAX West, so if you're going, let me know. I would love to meet you in person. I'm really excited for PAX West. There are going to be some big names like Nintendo and Sega that are going to be there, so I'm definitely going to make some coverage of the show, and I'll be sharing my thoughts here on YouTube of the show after it's done. The panel I'm moderating at PAX West unfortunately won't be live streamed on Twitch, but there will be an audio recording I might be able to get out to you guys, and if anything, I'll try to get one of my friends to film the panel so I can share it with you guys later. That's going to be it for me, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into this video about the 1.3.0 update. And if you're going to be at PAX, I will see you there. Until next time, friends, smirk on and have a fantastic day. I will see you guys in the next video. Later. Later.